All right, Evan back. I'm ready to continue my 3D printer build series. Uh, I'm going to go into a belt tensioning just a little bit. This is something that I wasn't really that excited about figuring out how to do, but it's actually so cool that I wanted to show it so uh, some other folks out there know to properly tension their belts and how much is too much and things like that. So uh, I'm going to jump right in and get started. So I've already determined that the radio load for my NEMA 23 stepper here is actually a lot more powerful than what most rep wraps use. Uh, this motor can handle a radial load of about 15 pounds. So that means if I were to push on this pulley here with 15 pounds of force and run the motor, it should be just perfectly okay and happy. Um, getting right on the edge there is probably not good. So. Uh, I'm going to show you how to find out exactly where you are uh, with respect to tensioning on your belt and find out uh, what's really the right thing to put it at for your motor. So when I set the tension on my belt, I pull here on this side, uh, typically with some sort of lever. Uh, I've been using a, uh, a box in wrench like this with a zip tie. So I'll pull and put some force there, come in with another wrench and tighten down this uh, down this nut right here. So once that nut's tight, this thing's not going anywhere. There's a T-nut in here and it just clamps it down. So I make sure that I've still got, um, that I haven't tightened this top bolt down too tight and this stays nice and loose, all is well. So I've got a bit of tension here. Um, not too much, I don't think, but it's, it's really hard to tell when you've really got it right. So what I'm gonna use is just a standard set of uh, Logitech gaming headphones, but basically any microphone will do. So I'm gonna jam this guy right up here. Let's see if I can get it somewhere good. Not touching the bell, but pretty darn close. And that's perfect. So interestingly enough, the tighter we get this bell, it's just like a guitar string. So when you strum it, the tighter it is, the higher the pitch is of this this oscillation. So what we're going to do is listen to that oscillation. And there's actually, if you want to find out what frequency to tighten it to, we could do this two ways. We know how much force we can handle, uh, radial force on this bearing here, and we know everything about the belt. So really, we can tune for a specific frequency. Or what I'm going to do is, since I've already set the uh, tension on the belt, I'm going to find out where I'm at, find out if I'm in a danger zone before I run this thing too much. So the actual formula is the frequency equals the square root of T over 4 ml squared, where T is your tension in newtons, M is your specific mass of the belt, and L is the length from tangent to tangent. So if you draw a line right in the center line of this belt, uh, you can actually measure this, uh, and that'll be the length of your guitar string, essentially. So uh, we're going to go ahead and try to measure that on the computer here. So I've downloaded a freeware program here called SoundCard Oscilloscope. It's free for non-commercial use. So I put it in single step mode here, or single trigger mode, and I can run. And I get a new sample. So I can look at that sample of the snap. Uh, and take a look at what the waveform looks like. So that's nice. Uh, if I wanted to, I could look at the oscillation of the belt, but that doesn't help me that much. But what I can do is throw this over into the frequency domain and start running. So right now it's picking up some very small noise and that's my voice coming in through. So what I can do, if you watch the main frequency and I strum the belt, you can actually see, let's see if I can get over there, way down in the 1000 hertz range here, let me zoom in just a bit more, so I've got 1000 hertz, So you can see down there when I strum it right around 40 hertz or 48 hertz or so. Let me zoom in a bit more. All the way over. Let me turn off auto scale here. So 
So you can see the main frequency here is coming in right at 45 hertz. And I can do it every time, and it's just 45 hertz. Turn off peak and hold, get an average or a real time here. Okay, so I've created a spreadsheet on Google Docs that I'll link in the comments below. And basically it allows you to find the belt tension and the bearing load from the frequency to find out, aka how tight is the belt. So I need to know how many pounds of force are pulling on my pulley here. So uh, the force is going to be two times the tension on a single side of the belt because it's pulling from both sides. You've got the back of the belt and the front of the belt both pulling on this, this bearing here. So what I can do is find the specific mass of the belt. And this number is kind of in strange units. It's in uh, grams per meter per millimeter. And so that's per millimeter of belt width. So they'll tell you how many grams per meter it is if it was one millimeter thick. But my belt is clearly a lot larger. It's nine millimeters thick. So I'll take the value of 2.8 for a GT2 three millimeter pitch belt. Uh, I'm actually using GT3, but I hope this is close enough because uh, I couldn't find GT3. For some reason so either way belt pitch nine millimeter the tangent to tangent distance like I think I said before is where the belt contacts it first so it would be the center line of each of these shafts typically or at least in my case so that distance is 0.52 in meters and the frequency is what we just measured so that would be around 46 Hertz and so after doing the math here T equals 4 ml squared F squared we get the tension, that's one side of the belt, is equal to 5.82 newtons or 1.31 pounds. So if you consider that as radial bearing load, the bearing radial load is two times the tension, I'll get said because it's pulling on both sides. So we're at 2.62 pounds. So we really have about, we're, we're at about 20% of the allowed uh, radial load for my motor. So I feel pretty good about that. I could probably go a little tighter. I'm not going to do that on camera, but uh, it's it's pretty good for now. It doesn't seem like it's stretching too much. I think I had 44 hertz the last time I measured it, so it seems like it's gotten tighter even, which I highly doubt. But um, you know, within the the accuracy of my measurement, that's it's staying pretty good and tight. And I think we're good now. You want to get it as tight as as reasonable. Uh, the tighter you are, the better you're going to have. Um, to keep it from slipping, so jumping teeth and so on. But uh, most 3D printer stuff is really low torque uh, requirements anyway, because you don't have a lot of mass that you're flinging around ideally, and you're not you're really using force to do your work. So uh, back to the spreadsheet, I can also find the hertz that I want. So if you want to target this, like for instance, if I'm doing my tightening scheme with my lever here and I'm pulling, I can strum this and watch the frequency. And as it does that, I can tighten it down right when I get to the frequency. So if you want to pick a target frequency of, say, uh, radial load right now is at, at 11. So let's shoot for 50. That'll be within range. It'll be 11.24 pounds. Uh, so that's saying 95 hertz would be good. So what I can do is loosen this guy. Actually, I'll do it real fast. I'll loosen this guy. And as I put pressure on it, Well, should have got my zip tie ready. Well, it wasn't meant to be. But still, uh, you can find out exactly what frequency you want to do uh, and, and just dial it right in. And so that should set pretty close uh, to what you want. Now, if the belt gets really big, a lot more mass to it, uh, you're gonna run out of range on your microphone. This guy's only good to like maybe 20 hertz and I wouldn't really trust it down there anyway. Uh, so they do sell some belt tension guides that will do uh, ultrasonic on the belt to get down in the two and three and five hertz. So uh, we use some of those at my job sometimes when we get to really big heavy stuff and you just, you know, really long span is gonna really oscillate really slow. So anyway, like I said, I'm gonna share this video or the uh, the spreadsheet uh, in the comments, it'll be public. Unfortunately, you can't just type your own numbers in uh, with Google Spreadsheets or I haven't figured out how to do that. So you'll have to make a copy of it to your own Google Docs and uh, then you, you're free to modify and change the units and do whatever you want to do with it. So anyway, 
I hope you enjoyed that video, and uh, I'll have another one soon. I got my hot end in, so that'll be the next one coming up, and I hope it all goes well, and uh, enjoy. Thanks.